Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, today is this uh, concluding lecture on Raja Ram Mohan Roy and in previous two lectures we have discussed his thought on religious reforms and also on modern education. Today we are going to uh, discuss um, his thought on freedom of press and political and civil rights and finally conclude uh, his um, uh, contribution in modern Indian political thought and thinking. So, today's key theme is his ideas on freedom of press, which I will um, uh, conclude and in the next lecture, we will pick up a new thinker and uh, some of the key themes that uh, uh, and through that key themes, we will try to understand the contribution uh, of the thinker in modern Indian political thought. And Raja Ramon Roy um, is um, more uh, uh, relevant for us even today when you think about the lot of limitations, regulations and censorship that is, um, uh, that, is um, uh, that is there whether by the government or by some kind of self censorship. So, um, uh, before I begin this discussion on freedom of press uh, and uh, Raja Ram Mohan Rai's idea on freedom of press, one, one needs to understand the uh, relevance and the significance of this uh, idea uh, for modern democracy, citizenship, rights and the whole artifice of uh, artifice of uh, uh, liberal, liberal democracy. So, um, what you see even in our contemporary times, because of the prevalence of so many uh, uh, fake news, uh, paid news, social media and uh, uh, 24 into 7 electronic or print media, the uh, task, the challenge uh, before the media also for the government and also for the uh, citizenship has become enormous. And especially when you have a kind of situation where uh, it is hard to distinct uh, which is fake and which is real, which is paid and which is not paid which is uh, news, uh, 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 which is uh, paid news in disguise of uh, 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 news. So, um, this becomes a challenge for a informed, uh, informed uh, citizen, because the task of media historically is to create public opinion on certain issue and highlight some of the um, wrongdoings or abuse of power on the part of executive and report it to the higher authority and that is how uh, liberal democracy correct itself and learn its own mistakes, rectified the mistakes and then again a uh, new kind of public opinion on certain issue is formed. But in contemporary times again as I was saying, there is this um, uh, uh, discourse which uh, highlight some issue which may or may not be relevant and conceal some issue which is very relevant. So, in this, uh, uh, this uh, situation, uh, the idea of free press as a, uh, as a uh, agent or as a um, instrument to hold the government accountable and also uh, shape the public opinion on certain political and social issue that is relevant to that society is extremely relevant. And uh, in contemporary times also, there is lots of regulation. Uh, kind of censorship on media by the government or also some kind of self censorship uh, which is there and uh, that remind us the significance of um, uh, free press, freedom of speech and expression which is uh, in, uh, inevitable in a, uh, in a liberal, liberal democracy which we have. And so, um, Raja Ramon Roy was articulating about the necessity 
and relevance of freedom of press in the very beginning of our so called cultural or uh, political renaissance in India in the very beginning of social and political awakening. So, we will discuss more on how Raja Ram Mohan Rai was articulating this idea of freedom of press in a situation which is uh, not a democratic uh, uh, democratic setup. It was um, under the British rule and British rule was uh, promising a kind of liberal, uh, liberal uh, rights to the citizens and at the same time denying uh, certain rights which was available to the colonized people in their home country. And Raja Ram Mohan Rai was articulating about the relevance of such idea in that context and that makes him more fascinating uh, thinker. What you find in Raja Ram Mohan Roy was not just a great social and religious reformers and uh, promoter of modern liberal education, but also someone who is deeply involved in, um, in um, a scientific or rational outlook about politics, society, citizens, uh, their, uh, uh, their civil and political rights. And he was an ardent supporter of freedom of press, which, which for him was sine quo non. That means absolutely necessary for any kind of representative, responsible or liberal democracy or liberal government. So, when um, uh, to contextualize um, his, um, uh, his, uh, his um, idea, he was um, uh, articulating and supporting what freedom of press, when there was a kind of um, uh, uh, a kind of um, initiative on the part of colonial administrator to promote some kind of um, uh, some kind of uh, native uh, press or printing, which will enable them to uh, represent and articulate their uh, opinion on many issues and express their grievances. And authority will try to readdress such uh, grievances. So when Lord Hastings somewhat relaxed the press censorship in 1899, Raja Ram Roy began uh, publishing three uh, magazines or journals, namely a Brahminical magazine in 1821, Samvad Kaumidi again in 1821 and Mirat ul Akbar 1822. So, um, Raja Ram Roy in a way was someone who grasped the relevance of uh, uh, free press and role of press in shaping uh, public opinion on matters of religion, society, politics, economics, etc. And he utilized such, um, uh, such relaxation when Lord Hastings uh, initiated or relaxed some kind of uh, press censorship in 1819. But in 1823, there was a news report published in Calcutta Journal. Uh, this is a journal uh, published by Buck Buckingham. And that somehow did not go well with the, the governor general in council of that time, who was John Adams. And he issued a press regulation, which restricted the uh, freedom of uh, press in India. And in a way, in a way, censor any kind of publication without the prior, prior approval of the government. So, this ordinance imposed certain restrictions on the freedom of press, which was relaxed by the Lord Hastings in 1819. And just in four years, the authority again uh, passed a uh, regulation, which restricted um, any kind of publication without the prior approval of the government. Now, in this, um, in this context, one needs to always understand that those who are in the power, those who are in the authority, they will always hold some, uh, some information. So, official secret acts or uh, some kind of regulation on press or printing. Uh, most um, uh, contemporary example was uh, during the time of emergency in India in 1975 to 77. We have seen how uh, press was um, strangulated or censored by those who are in the authority. And press, uh, press and its role is absolutely critical in a liberal democracy and in India we have a kind of uh, long history for struggle or fight against the freedom of press uh, to challenge, to question, to interrogate any kind of authori uh, authoritarian or official censorship on, uh, on freedom of press. So, uh, Raja Ram Mohan Roy in, in, in a way uh, 
even when he accepted and supported the British rule and we will discuss why he supported the British rule in, uh, in a few moment, um, uh, he was uh, someone who was a true champion, true fighter for the freedom of priests and he was the uh, first leader perhaps to understand the role of priests in creation of public opinion or uh, in, uh, in, in resolving a lot of social, political and economic issues in India. So, um, he, he, his uh, appeal or articulation about freedom of, uh, freedom of press started with this regulation passed by John Adam in 1823. Now, um, what this gadget says, uh, this regulation was all about that um, this in this government gadget, uh, gadget of 5th April 1823, the government issued an official order mentioning the grounds on which a publication can be restrained or restricted from publication. And these grounds were basically three. The first ground was that anything defamatory and harmful to the royal family, that means king of England, government officials and their allied powers. It is a very broad restrictions on any kind of publication which is considered uh, in the discretion of the official defamatory or harmful to the royal family, government official and their allied powers will be restrained, restricted from publication. The second ground of restriction was publications threatening the peace, harmony and social order. Again, this is a too broad canvas to precisely define what, what, um, what um, uh, threaten or what uh, do not threaten social harmony, peace and order. So, again the official have enormous discretion to uh, restrain any publication on the ground of that it may threaten social uh, peace, order and harmony. Then the third ground for uh, restriction was publication that creates suspicion and hatred among the natives against the government. So, on these three grounds, government through this regulation restrained the uh, freedom of press in India, which was uh, relaxed by Harding's just four year ago. Now, Ram Mohan Roy and many others treated these grounds of restriction of freedom of press archaic. Archaic that means outdated that means uh, not very substantial, not very convincing enough and it stated that it will in reality grant the government and its functionaries complete immunity from any public scrutiny. So, one of the feature of liberal democracy is any act of government or the executives are subject to public scrutiny. That means, any policies framed or implemented should be subjected to public debate and discussion and should be subjected to public scrutiny. That means, the criticism of government acts are not just um, promoted, but legitimate in a liberal uh, democracy. It is an essential part of liberal democratic process of governing and governance. So, um, Raja Ram Mohan Rai was very quick and many uh, of his colleagues we are quick to understand that this kind of regulation on the freedom of press will in reality give enormous power to the government and its functionaries, functionaries uh, complete immunity from any kind of public scrutiny. So, any public scrutiny of public uh, government officials and its functionaries can be easily uh, clubbed in any of these three grounds and can be restrained from uh, publication and that was their objection and they went to the Supreme Court and then King in the Council that we will discuss in the next slide. So, uh, similarly uh, like Raja Ram Mohan Roy, Dwarka Nath Tagore and several others presented a memorial to the Supreme Court against this regulation and when it was rejected by the court, they appealed to the kings in Council in London where it was again rejected, we will discuss that why. But significance of this memorial and appeal to the king in council is uh, something which we need to understand because this was perhaps first uh, official or, or first uh, communication addressed to a British monarch by any Indian. So, that, uh, that has its significance and actually uh, interesting uh, uh, 
part of this kind of um, uh, development was that it was by the natives res uh, responding to the regulations by by the administrator of a nation which claims to be a liberal advanced civilized nation and uh, they are uh, res uh, they are articulating the liberal thought liberal principles and um, cautioning the government or its official that depriving the natives or the colonized from this uh, liberal uh, principles which they cherish in their home country but denied and deprived the natives in their uh, uh, their estate that will lead to some kind of uh, uh, challenge or resistance to the uh, british rule itself so it was uh, this development was really significant given the historical context in which raja ram mohan rai was articulating and uh, uh, developing his thought on freedom of press so uh, while the memorial to the supreme court was uh, of pleading so uh, there is also the change in the tone of uh, 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 their articulation so in memorial they were more or less like pleading that this uh, ban or this restriction on freedom of press should be lifted but um, this appeal to the king in council was more elaborate in terms of providing the difficulties that might follow as a result of the continuance of this ordinance that's the restriction of press so what could be the possible percussion or consequences of this restriction on freedom of press was elaborately discussed and the reason for its removal was given in a very detailed manner in this uh, appeal so if we discuss uh, these two uh, major uh, text which uh, argues for freedom of press in one by one we will find that uh, memorial to the supreme court was presented the same year in 1823 and in the uh, beginning of this memorial and which reflected why uh, raja ram mohan rai and many of uh, his contemporaries were favorable or loyal to the british uh, british uh, uh, rule in india and at this point one also need to understand that raja ram mohan rai was uh, was someone who was initially very apprehensive or critical of british rule in india he considered it as a kind of uh, foreign yoke on the shoulder of uh, uh, shoulder of indians but gradually when he uh, develop interaction or uh, uh, friendship or come to came to know about their ideas thought uh, principle of governance promises of justice and um, uh, the way they administer the country somewhat he got convinced that uh, that british rule is good for uh, good for the country so uh, in the beginning of this memorial which he wrote to the supreme court uh, he presented an account of the loyalty and attachment of the natives towards the british government and also uh, asserted that there are no grounds for accusing them them means the natives of india Uh, of misusing or abusing the freedom of press that was provided to them uh, in the very beginning he explained to the british that we are loyal subject to the uh, british crown and there are no grounds no mis uh, misabused or uh, abuse of freedom of press that can uh, uh, that a government or british government can accuse the natives of so um, he argued that it was the wisdom and liberties displayed by the government that's the british government which was the basis of legitimacy of british rule in india so uh, support or legitimacy of british rule in india in the opinion of raja ram mohan roy and some of his contemporary was that uh, british rule is based on good intention and that intention is to bring about social political and economic transformation in society and improve the material and the mental condition of the um, indian subject so um, that was the basis for uh, basis of legitimacy for british rule in india and he viewed uh, printing and publication as the means of free discussion among the natives that could contribute to the improvements of their material as well as the mental condition so uh, for raja ram mohan rai uh, this uh, publication and printing or freedom of press was the essential for the mental and the material condition of for improvement in the material and the mental condition of 
Indian subjects, which in any case in uh, British rule in India was intended uh, uh, or intending for. So, uh, he argued that due to restriction on freedom of press, translation from both the Eastern languages as well as from the foreign publication will be severely affected. It will subsequently lead to far reaching consequences on the diffusion of knowledge and mental improvements of the natives. So, the other arguments that he provided for freedom of press is that once you have a freedom, uh, have freedom of press in a country that will allow you to translate the text uh, from other languages, other Eastern, Eastern languages and also, um, also from the foreign publications. So, uh, the text published in um, other countries, um, uh, especially European or uh, American uh, countries that cannot be translated if you have restriction on the freedom of press. And uh, if you do not allow such uh, translation or publication of the text published in other language or by the foreign uh, publication, then it will have far reaching consequences on diffusion of knowledge, which uh, British uh, government through its promotion of modern liberal education was trying to achieve in India and improving the mental improvements, uh, improvements of, um, of the natives. So, this will have consequences on this project of uh, diffusion of knowledge and improving the met, uh, mental uh, conditions of um, uh, mental faculty of, uh, of the natives in India as well. It will also percolate the natives from making the government aware of their condition and the injustices prevailing in the system. Now, uh, one of the um, significance of freedom of press is government can learn the grievances of the people and know about their issues and concern if they allow the freedom of press. Freedom of press not just scrutinize government policies or implementation, but also express the concerns and issues that is relevant for the people. So, Raja Ram Mohan Rai understood uh, this point and he uh, believed that restriction on press uh, will prevent the natives from making the government aware of their conditions and also the injustices that is prevalent in the system. Thus, it will disrupt the channels of communication between governed as well as the government. So, uh, Raja Ram Mohan Rai was arguing for a kind of continuous communication between governed and the government and that is about the issues that is relevant for the uh, governed and as well as their understanding of the prevalent injustices that is there in the system which government can rectify if it allow the freedom of press. So, uh, that is how he uh, why he supported and expressed why freedom of press is absolutely necessary for legitimacy of the British rule in India and eventual development of uh, liberal democracy, representative democracy in India. So, he believed that if th such a restriction is allowed, the natives will lose the confidence in the British rule to protect their rights and interests. So, why Indians were loyal or uh, had faith in the British, because they believed that British rule is for the improvement of the material or as well as the met mental condition of the people and also uh, uh, it is based on just principle, liberal uh, principle provided certain civil and political rights to the citizens. And if such restrictions is allowed, then people may eventually lose such confidence on the British government. Now, in this appeal to the king in the council, he states that disregard of the subordinate authorities as the reason for their appeal to the king in council, who was the guardian of their lives, property and religion. So, that is the expression of loyalty to the crown and he believed that, uh, so the king in, in council is, um, um, is uh, superior or uh, supreme authority to uh, protect or to um, uh, promote, uh, uh, to protect the um, onslaught on freedom of press or any civil or political rights guaranteed under law. And um, uh, if it is uh, taken, then um, the, the um, uh, concerned person can go to the king in council and get their grievance is redressed. So, when Supreme Court rejected their uh, uh, memorial, 
they went to the king in council and there uh, Raja Ramon Roy again argued in a very elaborate way of, uh, about the pros and cons of this restriction on the freedom of press. He considered in this appeal this ordinance on the restriction of freedom of press as an invasion of their civil rights. And this civil rights is something which uh, Raja Ram Mohan Roy consider absolutely necessary for the uh, mental development and improvements of individual as well as the community. So, civil, uh, civil rights um, uh, is invaded if such restriction is allowed. And he stated that enjoyment of civil rights was what distinguished the British from the previous Mohammedan rule in India. And uh, civil rights were one of the source of legitimacy of British rule and by invading them, the ordinance had posed a threat to their rule itself. So, um, this civil right is something which is new for, uh, for the uh, natives, uh, which they did not enjoy during the pre-colonial uh, uh, pre uh, rule, uh, uh, during the Mughals, uh, Mughals rule or in many uh, princely states like Rajputs and Marathas. So, uh, civil rights which is something which, which is absolutely necessary for the growth of individual was something they learned, they came to know about from uh, the British. And they considered that uh, this protection of civil rights is something that distinguishes the British rule from the uh, Mohammedan, Mohammedan rule in India. And therefore, uh, this um, uh, restriction on freedom of press, which uh, invaded this, city, uh, this civil right, ultimately leads and poses a threat to the very uh, legitimacy of the British rule in India, which, uh, which uh, uh, is the source of legitimacy of British rule. So, um, uh, he, uh, his defense of British, uh, his uh, defense of uh, freedom of press can be better understood from this, um, uh, this quotation and this quotation is from uh, this appeal to the king in council where he says that your majesty is well aware that a free press has never yet caused a revolution in any part of the world because while men can easily represent their grievances arising from the conduct of the local authorities to the supreme government and thus get them redressed the grounds of discontent that excite revolution are removed. So, uh, this is a very powerful articulation in support of freedom of press by Raja Ram Mohan Roy. So, what he basically says is that uh, and he is uh, 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 in a way reminding or uh, uh, representing before the uh, crown the case for freedom of press while uh, saying that if existence of free press has never caused revolution in any country. Revolution is something which challenge the uh, uh, existence of a status quo and uh, uh, bring about a rupture from the existing system of uh, control and rule to a new kind of uh, uh, rule. And it happens when the grievances of the people are not redressed by the uh, uh, authority or by the people, uh, uh, people in the position of power. So, uh, he is arguing that a free press has never caused a revolution in any part of the world, because while men can easily represent their government. So, so if you have the free press, then it gives you the platform, the space to represent your grievances against the local authorities. So, most of the time, it is the uh, lower level of uh, administrative machinery against whom people have a lot of grievances. And if such grievances get the platform to, express, uh, to be expressed and then the superior authority take into account such grievances and rectify those grievances, then it will sustain or it will help in the dura durability of that rule. So, um, Raja Ram Mohan Roy is arguing about uh, that thing. So, if the grievances is redressed, then it remove any ground for the disc discontent that excite the revolution. Now, where no freedom of press existed and grievances consequently remained unrepresented and unredressed, innumerable, revolu uh, innumerable revolutions have taken place in all parts of the globe 
or if prevented by the armed forces of the government, the people continued ready for insurrection. So, uh, he is arguing that when freedom of press is non, non-existent, then there is no scope for representing the grievances. And once the uh, grievances is underrepresented or unredressed, that lead to innum- innumerable revolution in many parts of the globe, uh, many parts of the globe. And even if the government suppress such, uh, such uh, revolution or insurrection against the rule for the time being, people continue to be ready for in insurrection in the future when, uh, when uh, circumstances uh, present so. So, the freedom of uh, press is absolutely necessary for the sustainability or durability of the rule and it is absolutely uh, critical for a liberal form of government. Now, Roy also presented some other arguments in support of freedom of press. The other uh, support he provided was that um, uh, many Christian missionaries involved in religious conversion were also um, promoting or uh, disreputing the native religion. And uh, Raja Ram Mohan Roy uh, believed that if freedom of press is available to the natives, they can also protect their own faith from this kind of malign propaganda by the uh, missionaries about the religion and faith of the uh, citizens. At this point, uh, one needs to understand also um, the significance of religion and religious rights in Raja Ram Mohan Roy. So, we have discussed this in the um, previous lecture on his uh, ideas on religious reforms. Along with civil, religious rights is absolutely uh, uh, critical for Raja Ram Mohan Roy. And this is something to do with the historical times in which, um, uh, in which he was writing or mobilizing the public opinion. And he considered British rule more just because he felt that in comparison to the Mohammedan Mom- rule or the M- Muslim rule, uh, uh, subjects of India feel more secured not just about their civil rights, but also about their religious rights under the British rule. So, uh, the religion and uh, protection of religion, promotion of one's uh, religion and of course, he was also aware of the many evil practices in the religion which he wanted to rectify like Sati Pratha um, um, and promotion of um, uh, uh, women education or um, abolition of idol worship, etcetera. So, he wanted to remove those evil practices. At the same time, he was also aware of the uh, worth or the significance of the native religion. So, he believed that uh, if freedom of press is provided to the natives, they can also protect their religion from this kind of uh, malign campaign or propaganda of the Christian missionaries to disrepute uh, their religion. Now, he his other argument which is more uh, significant is that uh, this duality in the nature or hypocrisy among the British, where they champion or protect liberal rights in their home country, but deny that rights to the colonized country. And against that, Raja Ram Mohan Rai have argued that guaranteeing the British citizens liberal rights and freedom while depriving such rights to the natives of India will provoke them to question and resist the British rule in India and also question or interrogate uh, the intention of uh, the British uh, rule which claims to be a kind of benevolent, more uh, progressive, progressive government in this uh, country, which is hard to believe if the same government protect and promote such rights in their home country, but denied and deprived the um, Indians of such rights uh, here. So, that duality is something which is very problematic and it can um, um, provoke resistance to the British rule in India. Now, uh, he also gave one specific that was related to the uh, restriction on the freedom of press that it is unjust to punish the natives for a crime they did not commit. And what is the crime? So, if at all any fault was committed, it was by the Calcutta Journal. So, if you remember uh, why this um, uh, regulation on freedom of press was uh, initiated this was because of some publication in Calcutta Journal, which was published by Buckingham and the whole controversy starts from there. 
So, Raja Ramon Roy is arguing that it is unjust to punish the natives for a crime they did not commit and therefore, to punish the natives of India for such a fault is totally unwarranted. So, it is uh, against the whole premise of natural justice. So, um, Raja Ramon Roy is arguing for the freedom of, uh, freedom of praise on these grounds as well. He is also arguing that by allowing public scrutiny, the government do not invite a threat to itself. So, usually those who yield power or uh, are in uh, position of authority, they do not want to share, they do not want to invite any criticism to their performance, to their implementation, to their execution of policies. They do not want to share such information with the, uh, with the public. But Raja Ramon Roy is arguing that uh, this uh, el allowing of public scrutiny, the government do not invite a threat to it, uh, threat to itself, but the opportunity to rectify its wrongdoings and also avail greater love and respect from the citizen. So the whole uh, question of legitimacy of a rule is dependent on this um, uh, provision of subjecting government policies and implementation to public scrutiny and that public scrutiny give uh, the government chance to rectify its wrongdoings, to correct its uh, measures and also earn the respect and love of its citizens which endure the uh, uh, rule. So, he portrayed the ordinance as harmful to both the natives as well as the British government that, that, that is quite clear. So, the natives will not be able to express their grievances and government will never understand the grievances of the people and therefore, cannot rectify such or redress such grievances, which will ultimately harm the legitimacy of British rule in India. So, and the um, other side of it is their belief in the British rule. So, many of them believe that British as deliverers and not the conquerors, father or protector and not a, a ruler. So, Roy asked them to repeal the ordinance for the sake of both government and the government. So, their expectation of the British rule was that it will champion or it will, uh, it will protect civil religious rights of the natives and help itself in sustaining its rule in India. However, this plea was rejected by the Kings in Council and that is the point I said in the beginning this uh, appeal as well as the memorial of Raja Ramon Roy for the promotion of um, uh, freedom of press was rejected both by the Supreme Court and also by the kings in the council. Now, the reason that they gave was that India was a colony and hence there was no public opinion in India and that is something very interesting. So, uh, the whole justification for British rule in India is that the Indians I hope many of you are aware of this white man burden philosophy that is they uh, are here not to rule, but to civilize the pri uh, primitives or the uncivilized. So, it is God given responsibility of uh, the British or white men to civilize the primitive. So, their rule is not for the benefit of themselves, but for the benefit of those they have colonized. Now, in uh, such argument they considered the colonial people incapable of representing themselves or governing themselves and that is the reason for their rule in, 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 in a colonized country. So, they are subjected to the more uh, civilized progressive uh, uh, crown or the uh, country of the Europe basically. So, the whole uh, edifice of colonial rule or imperialism was based on this, uh, this principle. So, the king in council rejected this plea of Raja Ramon Roy arguing that India was a colony and it is a colony, a colony hence there cannot be public opinion in India or legitimate public opinion in India. So, government knows what is in the best interest of the people and what government does that, uh, that is in the best interest of the people and hence there is no legitimate so called public opinion in India which should be promoted or protected through freedom of press, etcetera. The irony is Raja Ramon Rai was actually uh, arguing for freedom of press because that will help in creation of such public opinion in India. So, when uh, people will write, expre uh, write, articulate, assert their grievances, it will gradually help in shaping or constructing the public opinion in India and without the freedom of press, 
the possibility of such creation was uh, uh, non started it cannot uh, happen so this the uh, uh, irony in 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 the british uh, british um, argument for uh, restriction of press and raja ram mohan roy argument for the um, removal of such restriction on the freedom of press now very briefly on uh, his views on um, on um, civil and political rights uh, what we find is he is one of the first indians who imbibed the spirit of constitutional government so his appeal his memorial his support for modern education all reflect uh, reflect his belief in liberal responsible and accountable government and he was the first indian to imbibe this uh, spirit of liberal constitutional government in india and the sole reason for his justifying the british rule in india was the practice of civil li civil liberties so they believed in the just nature and the true intention of the british rule in protection of civil as well as the religious uh, religious rights and he insisted on the enjoyment of civil liberties for moral and intellectual development of the people he thought that because without the civil uh, rights there cannot be mental or intellectual development among the people and that is absolutely critical for modern representative liberal responsible government in india so uh, the other side of such support for liberal uh, uh, liberal constitutional form of government is his uh, continuous effort in protecting the civil liberty but he never thought of demanding political freedom of, of political freedom from british india and that is something uh, which uh, which uh, invites a lot of criticism against the raja ram mohan roy and we will discuss in the concluding slides why uh, despite of his support for civil liberties he never actually wanted political freedom so to uh, say from the british rule in india because he thought the natives of that period the historical circumstances in which raja ram mohan roy was articulating his uh, ideas on freedom of press political and civil rights he truly believes that they lack the capacity of self governance and therefore supported the british rule and another reason for his choosing of civil and religious liberty over the political liberty was based on history as i was saying that comparing to the mohammedan and british rule he stated that the, although the political rights present in the mohammedan rule are absent in later people were happier in the british rule so his argument is basically during the mohammedan rule many of the indians enjoyed uh, superior authority they had the political uh, political rights which is by and large absent during the colonial times and yet people were happier in the um, in the british rule because of some guarantee or protection of their civil uh, civil and religious rights which was plundered or insulted many times by by the pre british uh, rule including mohammedans and rajputs so um, raja ram mohan roy was arguing uh, for the civil and religious rights over the political liberty and freedom because of the historical circumstances in which people were uh, uh, people were caught in and raja ram mohan roy was uh, uh, was also someone who carried um, away by such kind of um, a belief in uh, prior right prior uh, giving priority to civil and religious uh, uh, rights over the political uh, freedom so according to roy it was the availability of civil and religious rights that made british rule more favorable and that's the uh, point we have just discussed now if you look at the criticism against raja ram mohan roy what we find is and some of the criticism against roy we have discussed in previous two lectures uh, especially from his conservative as well as the radical friends like radhakant dev and henry derazio uh, where um, uh, basically about his position on religious reforms and modern education and we have discussed it in our previous uh, lectures roy ideals the other criticism of roy is that roy's ideals of modernity he want india to modernize to develop scientific and rational outlook about religion uh, society politics economy but his ideals of modernity had some basic flaws as it was embedded in the ideals of empire the ideals of empire uh, he 
did not really question or interrogate it uh, or try to uh, alter uh, and articulate these the, his ideas uh, in contrast with the ideals of empire. So, the ideals he had was deeply embedded with the ideals of empire and the way he wanted India to modernize itself was deeply embedded in the ideals of empire and empire has its own uh, rationale, its own interest and he fails to understand such interest and, um, and ideals and uh, therefore, he, there is some basic flaws in, in, in his uh, ideals of modernity in India. The other uh, criticism is like he supported freedom struggles in different parts of the world. So, when Latin American countries were fighting against the Spanish or Ireland or many other countries were fighting against their colonizer, he was very uh, supportive of such, uh, such a struggle. He was deeply gladdened by the, uh, by the French, Re French revolution, but when it comes to India, he welcomed the British rule and did not really ask the question of political uh, freedom from the British rule and he considered it as the divine providence, it is something which is God gift and only through British rule India can modernize. So, there is a kind of uh, basic flaw in his ideals of modernity, so many people argue but we have to be very careful in such criticism, I will discuss it in the concluding slides. So, and the other criticism against uh, Raja Ram Mohan Roy is that he failed to fully grasp or anticipate the evils of British rule in India. So, many uh, scholars argue that Raja Ram Mohan Roy uh, uh, did not really understand uh, or grasp the rationale or reason data of British reason data of British rule in India and also the evil consequences of such uh, such rule. Now, uh, to conclude uh, we have to uh, acknowledge that uh, he was the first li great liberal and constitutional reformer in modern India and played a critical role in promotion of modern liberal education, religious reforms and in protection of freedom of press in India under the colonial rule. Uh, this is his remarkable contribution as a first modern Indian political thinker in terms of not just uh, reforming the uh, religion and the evil practices that is um, uh, carried out in the name of religion, but also in promotion of liberal education and through liberal education scientific and rational outlook which will ultimately lead to some kind of responsible and representative government in India and freedom of press is, um, uh, is complementary to his vision of future of India and that he uh, wanted to achieve under the British rule. Now, his support for British rule can be explained through his historical context in which uh, British appear to be more just and harbinger of change in a decaying society and economy like India in comparison to tyrannical rules of Rajputs and Mughals. So, if you we'll, uh, understand his support for British rule historically, only then we will be able to understand why did he support uh, the British rule. And also um, historically speaking, uh, when he was articulating his thoughts, the circumstances was in transition where one set of uh, ruler or uh, ruling uh, dynasty were on the decline be it Mughals, Muratha, Maratha or Rajput and British were on the on the verge of um, uh, consolid consolidating its, uh, its rule in India on the basis of certain legal sound, uh, sound principle or pre uh, predetermined principle of rules and administrations and uh, Raja Ramana Rai somehow believed and many of his contemporary believed in the just nature or the um, in, uh, uh, right intention of the British rule, rule, rule in India which uh, promoted or which protected which articulated certain inalienable civil and religious rights of the people which was denied by the pre-British rule in India. And therefore, many questions which was historically available later. So, in the later period there are many questions which, which is there such as uh, the question of autonomy and freedom from the British rule. These question of autonomy and freedom of British rule is simply historically absent when Raja Ram Mohan Roy 
was developing his thoughts and fighting for religious reforms or promoting modern liberal education or supporting freedom of press in India. So, easy for us today to ask why he could not support or articulate it for political freedom from the British rule in India. But if you look at historically and situate him and his thought in his historical time, in that uh, time and expectation of horizon, certain expectations, certain questions were simply absent. And that is why the question of autonomy and freedom from the British uh, rule was historically in their imagination, in their intellectual articulation and thought was absent and therefore, they really did not uh, 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 imagine or articulated the political freedom of political freedom from the British rule in India. And uh, he, they believed that material and the moral progress of India was achievable under the just and that is the belief in the just nature of British rule in India. Now, at this one this point one can also uh, make a comparison between some of his thoughts and the later thoughts that develops. So, many of you might be aware of uh, Dada Bhai Naroji, the un-British rule in India. So, the question is not against the British or their intention, but the un-Britishness of their rule in India. So, uh, so for a very long time the Indians or many Indian um, thinkers or political activists were uh, convinced about the just or the liberal principles of government uh, of the British, but they were critical or they were questioning or challenging the un-Britishness or, uh, or the duality of their rule, uh, their rule in India. So, therefore, the question of autonomy and political freedom which came much later in 1920s and certainly in 30s during the Lahore, Lahore session of the Congress we will discuss when we will discuss some other thinkers in India, but in historical uh, imagination or historical circumstances in which Raja Ram Mohan Rai was articulating his thought, this question of autonomy and freedom was simply absent um, and therefore, they uh, wanted India to progress to modernize under the British rule. Now, the other characteristic of Raja Ram Mohan Rai was he was willing to accommodate and learn from different tradition be it Islam, Christianity and Vedantic philosophy of Hinduism and promoted modern scientific outlooks towards society, religion and politics among his natives. So, as we have discussed in our first lecture, Raja Ram Mohan Rai was a widely read person, knower of a number of languages, almost 10 languages uh, he knew he can read and write uh, in many languages. And this vast uh, reading and comparative studies enable him to accommodate and learn from different tradition, different intellectual tradition and have a kind of uh, uh, thought which is uh, uh, accommodative of many uh, good principles or ideas from different intellectual tradition. And that is his broader comparative outlook and enables him to uh, develop in himself and he promoted it in the uh, natives of India to develop a scientific rational outlook to society, religion, economics and education etcetera. And he was equally supportive of the universal brotherhood and interdependence among individual as well as nation rather than independence and isolation. So, Raja Ram Rai was also someone who wanted to engage, to interact and that engagement and interaction will ultimately help in overall improvement of uh, material as well as the intellectual uh, condition of the people and both can learn from each other and he was supportive of such thoughts. Especially uh, many other thinkers like Rabindranath Tagore, Arvind Ghos uh, carried such, uh, such, uh, such ideas from Raja Ram Mohan Roy. So, what we can in conclusion learn from Raja Ram Mohan Roy is despite of his support for British rule, he began a thought, a process or intellectual tradition which many of his the subsequent thinkers inherited from Raja Ram Mohan Roy and carried it further in the intellectual as well as in the political field of, uh, pol uh, field of India and that is why he remained a very uh, powerful, very relevant uh, figures in terms of thinking about modern Indian political thought. Now, uh, for this lecture, you can look at some of these uh, texts like S. D. Collett on the life and letters of Raja Ram Mohan Roy, then from the English works of Raja Ram Mohan Roy, 
which is uh, edited by Jogendra Chandra Ghosh. You can uh, read these two memorials, at least memorial to the Supreme Court and the King in uh, appeal to the King in Council. And the other uh, uh, text you can look at is Thomas Pentham and um, Kenneth Deuce and Makers of Modern India by Ramchandra Guha. And if some of you are very interested in locating uh, Raja Ram Mohan Rai in the intellectual modern Indian intellectual tradition, you can look at this uh, text by C. A. Bailey, Ram Mohan Roy and the advent of constitutional liberalism in India. So, he uh, study his thought and activities in the larger constitutional liberal intellectual tradition in India at the beginning of such tradition in modern India. So, Raja Ram Mohan Roy um, uh, is a very fascinating or uh, influential thinker in terms of understanding or theorizing uh, modern Indian political thought. So, that is all on Raja Ram Mohan Roy. In the next lecture, we will discuss some other thinkers. Till then, thank you, bye and thanks for listening.